Hey, I'm Sara, and this video is about the different ways to 3D print fabric in a conventional desktop 3D printer. We'll start with basics of 3D printed fabrics, how are they made, and then we'll see step by step how to create your first swatch using the infill method, for which I've prepared a starter kit that includes all the files you need. So make sure to grab it, it is free, and you can find it by clicking the link in the description. Now let's dive in. First things first, what do I mean by 3D printed fabric? Well, I like calling it fabric because it resembles and behaves like it, but as you can imagine, it isn't made like conventional textiles. Most of the fabrics we use in clothing have a structure made of threads that are woven or knit together, like you can see here. But in the case of 3D printed fabrics, this is a bit different because the structure we create resembles a traditional textile, but there are no individual threads, so to speak. This one you see here is created using the infill method, but more on that later. The reason that 3D printed fabrics are so interesting is that you can get all the possibilities that come with digital fabrication, like production on demand, low waste, and easy customization, and apply them to creating garments and accessories. So for example, a project I started last year using 3D printed fabric was Symbiotic Shoes, which is my take on 3D printed shoes. This is just one example, but sky's the limit. There are a few designers already out there doing amazing things with 3D printed fabrics like Sarke or So Printed, so make sure to check them out, I'll put their names in the description. To my knowledge, there are four main ways to make 3D printed fabrics using a regular FDM printer. Let's see them one by one. To start, we have the chainmail method. The name is quite self-explanatory, as it consists of printing a grid of small rigid pieces, so together they drape and behave like fabric. There are plenty of free models out there you can download and print immediately, I'll put a couple of them in the description. There is also the possibility of writing your own G-code. G-code is the language that most 3D printers use to receive instructions. Writing G-code provides the most control over the final result because you are telling the printer exactly where to print and how, but it has a much bigger learning curve and it can be less visual than other methods. Another option is modeling your fabric and printing it with flexible material. And by this, I mean opening your preferred 3D modeling program and creating a design from scratch. This method can be especially interesting if you want to replicate a specific fabric. And the best example I can think of is lace. This is a topic I'll cover in future videos, so please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that. Finally, we have the infill method, which also uses flexible materials but requires little 3D modeling because we take advantage of the infill patterns of a slicing program. But what do I mean exactly by this? Let's go step by step. If you're somewhat familiar with FDM 3D printing, you'll know that 3D printed objects aren't printed solid, because that would be a massive amount of plastic to be used that isn't really necessary for most applications. That is why slicers convert a solid 3D model into an object that has solid walls and non-solid in a fill. And luckily enough, the infill can be tweaked to look like fabric, which means we can import a very simple flat shape to our slicer, remove top and bottom solid layers, and get something that, when printed in flexible material, looks and feels like fabric. So as an example today, to make our first 3D printed fabric, we're going to make a 50 by 50 millimeter swatch. First, we're gonna open a modeling software. I use Tinkercad for this video because it is free and easy for beginners. And we're going to create a block with dimensions 50 by 50 by 0.3 millimeters. Then we hit export and make sure it is exported as STL. Then we're gonna open our slicer of choice, mine is Ultimaker Cura, and we're going to import the block we just made. If we navigate to custom settings, we can see the top bottom layer tab. Click it and make sure that the fields top layers, bottom layers, and initial bottom layers are set to zero. Now comes the fun part. The infill has by default a grid-like structure, but it can be set to other patterns and densities. In Ultimaker Cura 411, there are 12 different infill pattern options, which gives you a lot of possibilities to create different kinds of fabrics. My personal favorite is Gyroid Infill at around 90% density. And finally, prints. For this, make sure to follow the instructions of the filament manufacturer. Also, printing with flexible materials can be especially challenging depending on the printer. In general, printers with the feeder close to the nozzle, like direct drive, work best with flexible filament. However, it doesn't mean that you can't print 3D printed fabrics with Bowden style printers. I do it, for example. It will just require slower print speeds and more fiddling with the settings until you find what works for your printer. 
but it's all worth it really because being able to 3d print fabric gives you a lot of options to be creative around fashion since you can be in full control of the shape and properties of your fabrics and create exactly the amount you need so there's very little waste compared to traditional fabrics so if you want to give it a try remember there's a starter kit link in the description and it's completely free and that's a wrap here's a summary of the methods we've seen today and there's a lot more i can talk about 3d printed fabrics uh, but that will come in following videos so i'm leaving it here for now I hope you liked it and feel inspired to try any of these methods and please let me know if you do. I'd also love to hear what other topics you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the comments.